this is uh, Ravenheart Renditions, and we are talking with Chris Wong, uh, Flare Woodworks, and part of Time Warp Tool Works. And I guess I'll let him introduce himself a little bit. How you doing, Chris? Doing good, Andrew. How about yourself? Pretty good. I got a little more shop time than usual lately, which is always good. <laughs> How about yourself? Oh, I've been spending every every waking minute in the shop. Um, it's just one of those one of those times where where you're on a roll, you just keep going. <laughs> So speaking of uh, of your shop, you uh, you have a website, and um, I'll put a link to that uh, on the when when everybody's watching the video section of this. But why don't you tell us a little bit about your website? My website, uh, flarewoodworks.com. It's a combination um, business website and a blog. It's got my portfolio and my about and my uh, some references and that sort of stuff. Things that I've done, my curriculum vitae, if you will. Um, and part of the part of the draw is the blog, which I try to update a few times a week. And I've that's where I I post uh, progress of my projects as well as little reviews of tools and things that I recommend and focus on techniques or whatever I want to talk about in uh, relation to woodworking. Yeah, anybody out there, if you haven't had a chance to check it out, there's a there's a link to it on my links page, and it's it's pretty interesting. Some of your projects are mind-blowing actually you look at them and the, the the sculptures and, and the different things and the the one section when you, you you tried to start clearing out your shop a little bit i think a few things were were uh, being given away which was kind of fun and and oh yeah that's that's still going on yep <laughs> the overflow yeah so why don't we uh why don't we talk a little bit about some of your sculptures and some of the different kind of woodworking you do sure um the furniture that i do if you're not familiar with it it's not you can't really categorize it as it's definitely not anything that's um, you see in books very often as far as like mission furniture or arts and crafts or stickly or um, even art nouveau or um, Queen Anne any of the styles it's it's really a contemporary uh, version just my interpretation of furniture not really a style it's it's a style but it's not any predetermined style that we've seen in the past mm -hmm. um, it's it's just what I see furniture to be, what I, what inspires me, and what I want it to be. That's it's cool. And by the way, the uh, the one I, I guess I can't remember the what you put for a name of it. The one table that has the it's got a base. It comes up one side, and then it, it's it's just the one sided support. My mom wants it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one that I I did the tweet along. Yep. Right? Yep. Yeah. That was that one. <laughs> that that's actually a really good example of blended woodworking. Um. The project that Andrew's talking about, um, I think I've, I haven't really given a title yet. It's just um, a sculpted ash table. And the story behind that was it was, I think, maybe December 22nd or something. And I needed a present for my brother. And he he's one of those people you don't know what to get for. So I thought, oh, geez, why don't I build him something? So I went down to the shop and I, I went, went on Twitter. I said, hey, I'm going to build a table today. So I went down to the shop. I took a picture of the first piece of wood that I saw that was really weird, really gnarly. It was like bent and varied in thickness. And it was one of those pieces that you just don't know what to do with. But I hung on to it because it was a, it was a good sized chunk of ash. And that's really what started it. It was um, warped and bent and twisted and Every every defect you can think of, minus checking, was in there. <laughs> some of those some of those gnarly ones are some of the most beautiful wood underneath, though. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I kind of built the whole project around that piece. So that was the upright column, the leg or the column, I suppose you'd you'd call it. And because we, we're talking about blended, we're woodworking using hand tools and power tools, and one of the type. One of the um, the best reasons for using a combination is because, well, just for efficiency for me. When I built that project, uh, started December 22nd, I think it was, so I wanted that one done pretty quickly. So I wasn't going to sit around at my bench um, using chisels when I could, or using chisels or saws when I could do it more efficiently with a rotor or an angle grinder. But then... On the same token, I wasn't going to sit there at the table saw and build a jig to do something that I could just lay out by eye and then cut to the line with the hand saw. So I was really 
I was using both hand tools and power tools in what I felt was the most effective, most efficient way for me to build. So, and, and with that, with that piece and some of the other ones that I've seen you do, I mean, there's a lot of stock removal in some areas. And do you use oh. the the power tools for the 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 bulk of the stock, and then and then come back with the hand tools, or do you go all the way to finish with with power tools sometimes? Um. It's not that clear cut. Um, <laughs> sometimes, I, well, power tools are most often used for roughing. Mm -hmm. Not not necessarily just for roughing, but most often used in that stage because that's what they're great at. They're great at hogging off stuff. It requires less effort. But there are times as well where I'll just pick up my, my number nine gouge in a mallet and go at it, and I'll waste away wood quickly with that sure. or a drawn or yeah. even a half kit. So there are a lot of hand tools that are also very efficient at removing material. A jack plane is another one that comes to mind. If I'm dealing with a, a twisted board I want to make flat, it's not really that efficient to go to the jointer and pass over it a few times. It's, it's actually a little tricky, too, because you can just continue to twist if you're not careful. I'd uh, sooner go to a hand plane, take off the two high corners. Yep. Yeah, With if there's, if there's a, a bow or a cup, it's usually not too bad, but when there's a twist, I mean, you're either going to make it worse or make a missile out of it, usually. <laughs> I haven't had the latter, but... <laughs> I have seen... I have not done that on the joiner. I have seen one person do it, and I I, I do not want to be on the other end of that board. <laughs> Always stand to the side, right? Mm -hmm. never, never in line. So Matt asked me the other day how I started doing things, and, and when, when I started... It was someone was teaching me and showing me how to do things, and they said, no, you will use the hand tools. When I got back into woodworking later, because I was forced to do it, I didn't want to use them, and I tried to stay away from them. Now, well, I've got a number three through seven plane. I've got, I'm the one that had to mark over 20 hand saws. I don't even want to count the chisels and everything else. So I've <laughs> kind of came back around. <laughs> how, did yeah. you, how did you get your start with either power or hand or? Um, I, geez, I think I started mostly with hand tools just because I was at a young age and that's one, for one, they're more accessible, they're more affordable mm -hmm. and they're also safer too. Yes. Um, I, I remember as a little kid, I don't know how young I would have been, maybe six or eight, uh, using a, just a coping saw to cut out uh, Baltic birch and making these little models or something. And I think I spent a summer doing that, cutting out little things and painting them and assembling them or making little things like that. <laughs> so you've been doing woodworking a little while, so... A little while, yeah. yeah. So other than the than the few things when you were younger with the coping saw, how, did, how do you say you got your start in woodworking? I mean, what what drew you to say, hey, I, I want to make this board into something other than just a flat little board sitting there? Yeah, that, that's one thing I, I haven't quite pinpointed. Um, my Where I really seriously got into it was uh, just right before I got into high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember one set that one summer I'd uh, gone to the library, must have brought out every single book, including all the fine woodworking back issues, and read them all cover to cover. And at that time, I think I had a, a jigsaw. I had a I bought myself a, a craftsman table saw, which I sold a year later because it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> We've all had that one. <laughs> and I think at that time I had um, my only tool for surfacing stock was a number four hand plane, and I did all my jointing, all my thicknessing with that plane. I can't believe I did so much with that. I was working with mostly, mostly softwoods too, but still it's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, I guess from there, grade nine, I, grade nine, first year of high school, I took um, the woodworking class there and um, that was that was a good experience the one semester there and I got to use some of the machines and get some guidance about how to use them safely and was, I began to understand what they can do and how they work. And from there, I, I took all the other, must have been eight courses offered throughout high school. Uh, my grade 12, um, my grade 12 final year was, um, woodworking, woodworking, drafting, woodworking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on a, on a little side tangent, Chris is up in, in Canada now. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, do they still offer all the same kind of things for uh, woodworking in high school that, that they did when you were there? Well, the the shop that I went to at, at my school, that one closed down, but there are a lot of other 
schools. I don't know if I can say a lot, but there are a number of other schools. Um, I've talked to a lot of shop teachers who are trying to figure out how to get their curriculum uh, sorted out, what they're going to teach. I've spoke to a lot of teachers who are doing, um, the, the students are making guitars, oh, either wow. electric or acoustic, which I thought was quite ambitious, especially acoustic. Yeah. Um, there's one school where they've got actually, a, it's almost like a, almost a college level program. It's, it's um, I think it's three blocks a day or something, which equates to almost four hours a day in the shop, which I, I was kind of blown away that that's still offered. Yeah. Yeah, that's great to hear nowadays. I mean, a lot of the places around us, I mean, I'm I'm in about in the middle of Wisconsin, and the the school that's literally down the street from us, they still have the shop classes, but a lot oh, of the wow. a lot of the other ones still don't. They're dropping shop classes and music and a lot of the creative things that the kids just don't have the option for. So, well, little side tangent there. That's probably for another month, but I had to had to check it out since I had a chance to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. I'm in Port Moody, by the way, um, just out of outside of Vancouver, about 20 minutes, for those who don't know. So, um, well, I know you've got a, a Laguna bandsaw, like I do. Yes, I do. Um, so, in your shop, what's what's the most used power and hand tools that you have? Um, most used po uh, stationary power tools or any power tool? Just any of them. The, the thing, the thing you go to the most for the power, couple of power tools and a couple of hand tools. Um, dust collector. Um, <laughs> yes, that, mine too. <laughs> uh, besides that, the table saw and the band saw. Um, for hand tools, probably a chisel and followed by a plane and hand saw. Cool. What, uh, what kind of hand saws do you usually fire up over there <laughs> um i've got a, a dovetail saw it's uh, a 14 teeth per inch it's one of the veritas ones it's good for detail work i need to get a i guess um, a tenon saw something a little coarser in the teeth pattern hmm. so i can work with some thicker stock like i find myself often doing which i don't really have a tool uh, a saw that's well equipped for that well what? good luck on finding that one and i've i've uh, I heard that there are some new new tenon saws coming out, so I'll have a look at when they come out. Yeah, I'm a I'm a junkie for the old stuff. I I love the yeah. old ones. <laughs> well, when you work in a tool store, you you tend to buy the new stuff. Yeah, that's true. One of the tools I picked up at Woodworking America, the only tool I picked up was a new Concepts fret saw, five inch version. Oh, that's the one with like the um, I guess you call it a beam looking yeah, frame. It's, it's, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's got yeah. Yeah, we'll works. we'll put a picture on the vi on the video. But that I've I've uh, tried a couple of them and wow, yeah. them nice. I've often you've seen how Sam Maloof uses a bandsaw just running the boards through at, at will, right? Mm -hmm. And I've often wished that there was some kind of tool I could use and cut curves and twist and make turns and twists and all kinds of stuff in the wood. And I bought the saw and I realized this is what I need. I can do so much with this. I can I can cut twists. Um, I shot a little video. I had a a piece of um, soft, I don't know, aspen or something, three quarter by three quarter, and I started uh, ripping it with the coping saw. And as I ripped it, I was turning um, about it. So I ended up actually cutting a spiral right through it. Oh wow! But just for fun, um, snapped a couple of blades and made lots of smoke. But, <laughs> um. The saw was able to do that, and that's something you can't do with any other tool. No, no, it's and I've like I said, I've tried it. It is an amazing saw, and the yeah. um, I don't remember. I think it's is it Elkeb that makes the handles that fit yeah, it perfectly. Uh, Bruce, the Bruce. Oh, Bruce Bruce. Bruce. Yeah, that's. I think that's the the one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've got the five inch. I got my eyes on the eight inch version now. <laughs> no. Now I know what I'm going to be picking up at Woodworking America next time I'm there. <laughs> so, well, we actually had a chance to talk down at Woodworking America, and uh, yeah. I guess you were there with Shannon Rogers. It's another little venture that you're part of, uh, Time Time Warp Tool Works. That's right. Um, that's kind. Of, that's a, a partnership between myself and Garth Schaefer. Uh, we're both uh, in the BC area. He's a little little distance away from me, but. Together we decided that we decided that um, there was a market for some some different um, 
different tools. There were some designs that we wanted to see on the marketplace that no one had brought yet. So this was our this this is our little venture to um to make that happen. So we've got a few products that we've released so far. Um, the first was molding planes, which we actually built for Shannon Rogers, uh, the hand tool school. Mm -hmm. They did a, a, le a couple lessons on uh, molding planes. So we were able to fill fill the demand for the students there, fill their orders. Mm -hmm. And geez, some of those, the work that the students do, Shannon's a good teacher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've seen just some of the pictures of what comes out of there. I'm, I've, uh, I've watched most of his videos. I'm part of the hand tool school too. And mm -hmm. man, some talented people out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've got a collection of a few works from some of the students as well as myself and Shannon on the Time Warp site. Um, it's timewarptoolworks.com or TW2.ca for short. And there's a Travelers Gallery which we've set up there for to showcase the work of our customers, which is pretty. It, it, it's nice to see that people are using our tools and to see what they're making with them. Cool. Well, hopefully I can. Uh... Before too awful long, hopefully I can put my order in and get a picture of something up there sometime too. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. And then um, we're also making wooden bench dogs too, which I can't believe anybody else isn't making yet. But, uh, they're just awesome. I've been beating mine up. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I've got a couple in my bench that I picked up from you at Woodworking in America. They work great. <laughs> Yeah, they're so much kinder on the tools, aren't they? Well, they're kinder on the tools if you slip, and they're kinder on the wood if it's a it's a softer piece of wood. My metal my metal ones, um, they, they, they leave a mark. <laughs> yeah. So, well, the other thing I have to ask you is, so there's there are people who do, I guess you'd say like a reproduction and try to do everything true to the old school way of doing stuff. And I mean, and, and if that's their yep. goal, if that's their goal, that's that that's what their hobby is and what they want to do. There's nothing wrong with that. And there's other people that are just hand tools, hand tools, hand tools, and hand tools only. And there's right. other people that are, I don't want to touch a hand tool. I'm an only power tool guy. And yep. the way I look at it is almost anybody who has those power tools probably has a set of chisels and a block plane. Yeah. And a lot of the people that are doing all hand tool work most of them started doing something with the power tools, and a lot of us have that gateway miner saw or something. Yeah. And 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 I look at it that blended woodworking's just fun. <laughs> I can do either oh, one. <laughs> it, it makes sense. It, it makes the most sense, I think. Mm -hmm. I think we're both biased there. But... <laughs> yeah. Well, we're kind of stuck in that way, and we we look at it that way. But and there are times that you know, being coming from, I don't want to touch a hand tool years ago. There are times that I'm down here when, one, it's either late and I can't make the noise because, well, power tools are damn noisy and so is the dust collector and everything else. I don't want to wake the whole house up because I have a basement shop. Or yeah. there's times that I just want to feel the wood give me some feedback and I pull out the planes and I, you know, plow a groove with a plow plane, plow plane instead of setting up the router. Or yeah. yeah, yeah. And I guess I look at it that the more hand tools that I'm using – the better I'm able to use my power tools. I can read the wood and understand it better because I've felt what it does. <laughs> That's an excellent point. Uh, if, you, if you learn just with power tools, you, you become, um, in a way, insensitive to the wood. You just, you, you, can, you can almost entire not quite entirely, but you can, to a large degree, just have your way with the wood when you're using machines. You don't, don't have to pay attention to grain or anything else. Mm -hmm. You can just... Just cut it, and the wood will it'll part. Just because that's the way that the machines work. When you're using cutting instruments like chisels and planes, you do have to pay attention to all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it come it comes with uh, with some practice, a little bit of know how, and and the wood will tell you when something's wrong. If it yep. tells you when something's wrong on a power tool, it's probably too late. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's very true too. <laughs> um, well, I guess the uh, bandsaw part of stuff—you do a lot of the the sculpting, the 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 Running Man sculpture. The what, <laughs> I remember seeing of that. That that was yeah. fun to watch develop over the <laughs> through the through the tweets and the pictures on your site. Um, you didn't use a bandsaw on there at all, did you? 
Um, I wasted away a couple big areas with the bandsaw, but um, not very much at all. There were a couple large cutouts which I pulled out with the bandsaw, but um, no, aside from that, it was all hand tools. Okay. What what kind of vice do you have that you were using there on the Running Man anyway? <laughs> that's that's my favorite vice in the world, the Tucker Vice by Veritas. Hmm. That's a pattern maker's vice. That's that was an interesting vice. I kept looking at that, going, I might need one of those. <laughs> Can't get them anymore. You gotta look. You gotta look hard to find one. If you can find one, snatch it, pick it up. If I find one, I'm grabbing it because it looks like something that I'm like, you know what? I could use that. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful vice. It. Um, if you if you're not familiar with the pattern maker's vice, it. Well, it was developed for the pattern maker, or maybe by the pattern maker, but it was used by the pattern maker anyhow who often had to deal with odd shapes of wood in his pattern making. So the front jaw angles, you can hold skew pieces. You can rotate the whole vise 360 degrees around and around. And you can also tip it up so it's um, instead of uh, vertical, the jaws are vertical, they can be horizontal or anywhere in between. It's a really impressive vise. I should actually do a post on it. Yeah, that's that's really a, an interesting vise. It's really cool. The only thing is it's not available, so it's yeah. not like post. People say, where can I buy one? And I'll say, you can't. You can't, only mine. <laughs> 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 well, I, I asked you which ones, which tools you use the most and which ones you reach for. Right. So I have I have two other questions along with that. Which which tools, which hand tool and which power tool are your favorite tools? And which ones do you not want to use? <laughs> um... I don't think there are any tools that I don't want to use, actually. Well, like mine, I have a dovetail jig that I picked up secondhand, okay. and I, I've, I've complained about this forever. And yeah. I hate that thing. I'm going to give it to somebody because I can't stand it. <laughs> I've been giving away all my all my tools that I don't like, I don't use. Um, <laughs> I'm looking on my shop right now. I don't see any tools that I don't like using. Good. Uh, I've been fairly selective in my purchasing. I don't go out and buy tools because they're on sale or something. I go out and buy them because I, I can use them. Mm -hmm. um, maybe one of the routers that I have that are just hard to adjust. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, some, uh, some of them, that you, when you when you end up picking up one and then you're like, well, you know, I picked it up because I wanted a router, but I really should have got this other one. It's yeah. There's a few things like that, but like my miner saw, I could take it or leave it. It's a cheap miner saw. But I don't use it for that much except breaking down stock. It does what it does quite well. <laughs> uh, what was the second part of your question? I forgot. What are the what, one power tool and one one hand tool? What is the favorite one? Even it oh. might not be your most go to, but when you pick it up or when you turn it on, it's just oh boy. <laughs> um, probably probably the bandsaw, or maybe the table. Well, actually, my all time favorite power tool. Just for pure fun, is the angle grinder with um, an Arbortec cutter on it for sculpting. Oh, and that that removes stock quickly too. <laughs> it can also, be very controlled. It's so much fun to use. So, yeah. um, there's no guides, no nothing. It's just just you and the wood and the tool, and you can do whatever you want with it. That's awesome. So, how about how about the hand tool? Hand tools. Um, one of my favorites is uh, the, the Center Scribe by Bridge City. It's one of those things I put off buying for years because it's expensive. But I, I just, you know, you know how many times you set your double square, your 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 um, combination square for about halfway. You put your pencil down, then you flip the square over, then you put your pencil down again, see if it lines up. Mm -hmm. Then you adjust your combination square, you try it again. I got sick of that, so I bought this uh, Center Scribe and. Well, it's just so convenient, so nice to use. Oh, cool! It's a luxury, but oh, I we all we all have to have some. <laughs> well, that's uh, I guess I had to see what you're looking at for the power tools and the hand tools. The only other thing is, so if if you're looking at a power tool and a hand tool that you want to pick up yet, what is what are the the two things that you're like, you know, I really <laughs> want one of these. <laughs> um. Jeez, I kind of hate to say it, but most everything that I want, I kind of have. Um, <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> like I said before, I'm looking for a 10-inch saw, just a, a bigger rip-cut uh, mm -hmm. back saw. Um, I need some more space. That's what I need. Yeah, that, that we could all use. 
maybe a, a portable bandsaw mill, but I have no room to, to store that. But it would be nice to have. Yeah, you actually go, uh, I remember seeing a few things out there about, uh, you were milling some lumber? Yeah, um, I've got a friend who's got an Alaskan chainsaw, uh, Alaskan chainsaw mill attachment. So, he gets, he gets calls from the arborist saying, hey, I got this tree, you want it? And he'll call me and say, hey, Chris, I got this spectacular log. And I'll say, have you seen my yard? I have no room. <laughs> <laughs> He'll say, oh, but it's so great. So we'll go and get the log and we'll go mill it and load it up in my truck and I'll bring it home and I'll figure out where to put it in my yard, let it dry for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> Having too much wood is never a bad problem. <laughs> um, I'm starting to, um, starting to think otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually I'll <it'll> use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was talking to him today, and I said, I got so much wood. And he says, well, you know, it's better It's better than some things. And I said, well, like what? He said, you could be a cocaine addict instead of a wood addict. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So, some days I wonder which one would actually cost more when I'm looking around my shop. <laughs> it's not a, it's an interesting thought. <laughs> so, well, hey, I know you got to uh, go, and you're... you're given a, a presentation at a, a local event up there so i won't keep you too much longer but i just want to say thanks for your time and everything and i uh i hope we see some more stuff anybody who hasn't had a chance to check out uh, flare woodworks get on out there there's a link on the page and there'll be a couple more and go and uh, check out time warp two works too it's it's great great talking with you chris all right if i can th throw one more note there sure um if you check out my blog there uh, flarewoodworks.com if you subscribe um, we talked about the, the tools I'm giving away. It's what I call my overflow program. If you sign up for that, I'll, you'll get a notification every time I make a post. And when I when I have a tool I, I just don't use, I don't like or whatever, <laughs> I'll put it up for grabs and leave me a comment there if you want it, and then I'll draw a name out of a hat at the end. So it's a good chance. If you don't have all the tools you need or want, maybe I'll put the one up that you want. Yeah, and I've I've seen some of the tools out there. It's worth subscribing because there's been some nice stuff out there. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, so, thanks, thanks a lot, Chris. Okay, good night, Andrew. Thanks for hosting me. Hey, no problem. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully we'll be able to get, get to do this again. All right.